Have we not enjoyed our leadership conference on this morning? Amen. I give honor to God, to our general supervisor, and to our general supervisor emeritus. My name is Waynell Henson, and I am from Dallas, Texas, by way of Kansas City. Kansas City, Kansas. Yes, I hear you, Mother Sims. I am from the Kansas East jurisdiction. Bishop L.F. Thuston, our chairman of the General Assembly, is my prelate, and my supervisor is Mother Betty Jo Owens Morrison. And this morning, we're going to talk for a few minutes about looking and living holy. Look and live holy. Somebody shout, look and live holy. And look at that pretty lady next to you and say, you look good. Yes. And your looking good is no accident. All of us spent considerable time figuring out how we wanted to present our best selves as we came to this International Women's Convention. We were pulling out things and laying out shoes, and if you didn't have something that you wanted to have, you were busy online or out at the mall because you wanted to represent in the best light possible, and that's exactly what God wants from every one of us as holy women. And as we look at how we connect, part of our connectivity is that connectivity that we have as women who are a part of the Church of God in Christ, but also as women who represent every single day when we step out of our homes, we not represent, but we represent Christ every single day when we walk out of our homes. And a lot of that has to do with just how we look. Now, last week I started a, an internship. It's a new internship for me, and I spent last week in the Dallas County DA's office. And I sat in on two murder trials and one for aggravated kidnapping where a jury panel had to decide whether someone was guilty or innocent, whether they would receive a punishment or whether they would go free. And on one of the breaks, I was standing at the elevator, and on that particular day, I wore a black dress with a black blazer. I had on uh, my pantyhose, which are now the social or fa uh, fa fashion magazines now call them concealer for your legs. <laughs> they just make them look pretty when you have them on. So I had my concealer on my legs and black pumps. And when I went to the elevator, there was another young woman there who had on a black dress, and we were two brown girls who had on black dresses. But her black dress was a little different from mine. Her black dress had a much deeper plunge down the back, and that wasn't a problem, but her back was a canvas that she had creatively had a bunch of tattoo designs on, intricate work, and that caused me to just kind of look, and I looked at the entire thing, because that's what we do. You, you look up and down, too. You see the shoes. And I looked down, and she, too, had on black shoes. And you know, no, it, it's Dallas. It was almost 90 degrees. I was OK that she didn't have concealer on her legs. But because she didn't conceal, I saw the additional canvases of her body where she was tatted all up and down her leg. I realized in that moment that I was guilty. I, standing in the courthouse, was guilty. And guess what? If you look down your row and find 10 women, eight of you, eight of the 10 of you, 80% of the women in this room, you're guilty just like I was. I'm not guilty because I judged her for anything that she had on. I don't know anything about the woman. But I knew that in those few moments in front of the elevator, two brown girls in two black dresses that I looked at her and I started in my own mind to create the story that I thought existed of her life standing in the courtroom in Dallas County. I didn't know a thing about her. I didn't know her background. But I also knew this, that when those same two brown girls walked into the hallways of the Dallas County Courthouse, people looked at us differently and people treated us differently. And they assumed that we were there for two very different reasons. And in that moment, I understood that that is really the conversation that we are all having today when we talk about looking and living holy, that again, every single day when we step out is that chance to represent who we are and what it is that we stand for. Because every day when we step out, someone decides something about our story. 
And so today I hope to encourage you to consider the importance of our personal presentation and even to challenge what it is when we see other people and in our own minds we start to create the story because the truth is we really don't know much about the people that we run into. There was a song in your, our childhood on one of the uh, television shows that said, who are the people in your neighborhood? They're the people that you meet when you're walking down the street, the people that you meet each day. And we are those people in our neighborhoods, in our homes, in our churches, in our schools, and in our communities. And again, part of our connectivity is exactly how we represent. When we see someone else, some other woman, the question is, who is that lady? When people see you, that's the question. Who's that lady? And where is she from? What's on her mind? What's she thinking? What has she done? Where is she going and what's she going to do? What has she accomplished? And so we're all connected. We're all connected. And those first impressions are really, really hard to change. You only get that one chance to make your first impression. And so as much as we like to minimize it or express ourselves, because there really is sort of this new sort of um, social conscious about freedom of choice, and you know, I can wear what I wanna wear and I do what I wanna do, and it expresses who I am. But inside of that power of choice is the requirement that we handle the power of choice responsibly. And that means our appearance matters. And if we don't believe that appearance matters, we can look at companies like Spanx, who is making billions of dollars. Because when we come out, we want to be smooth and snatched. Or perhaps everyone is not so embracing of the gorgeous and gray movement. And there are hair dye companies that are making billions of dollars because we choose to handle that differently. But we're gonna talk for just a little bit because image is everything. And part of that image is the brand that you call you. And so we're gonna talk just a bit about brand and brand you and how that has to do with looking and living holy. Now for a number of years, I worked for a major company that sold colored sugar water. Now there are two major companies that sell those. You can see in my bio where one of them is. What is colored sugar water? You want a Coke, you want a Pepsi, you want something cold, something bubbly every now and then. But I got a little bit convicted working in sales and marketing because sometimes we grab a beverage without even thinking about it. And at the same time, I stood on this side and said that we sat in meeting rooms and you and I as consumers only grab something out of the cooler, but we don't necessarily think about the process of getting it to that cooler. And just like we're sitting in this room today having these conversations, there is someone in Atlanta, Georgia, sitting in a room talking about how to get the next bottle of colored sugar water to you. You would think that they know that you know good and well who they are when you walk up and see that white script on a red background that you know who they are. And at the same time, there is such a thought and such a methodology and such a science that goes into getting that bottle to you at the customer level. Why did that convict me? Because we spent so much time on the bottle of colored sugar water that I started to ask, where are we spending that same kind of time as saints of God, thinking about our own product our product being ourselves and what we represent, and how that gets to the market, how that gets in front of people. And that is really what branding is. And you know what, branding and great execution, looking and living holy, doesn't just happen. It is very, very intentional. If we talk about brands, there are three things that they'll tell you are important. Your packaging is important, that's what's on the outside. Your placement is important, where you put it. And lastly, the price on it, and that is how we value it. Why is it important that we look and live holy? Why is our personal brand important? First of all, it may not be, we, we love brands, we really do. We, we like to drive certain kinds of cars, we, we like certain kinds of shoes, we like certain clothing. You know what, let me just tell you, I'm particular about the kind of cheese I use. 
Funny story, in my family a few years ago, my mother decided that she was going to purchase a generic brand of cheese because it was on sale. And when we saw this, I said, mm-mm, that doesn't look right. And they said, oh, you're just being picky because you work for a cheese company. I said, okay, because all cheese is not created equally. And so she made this incredible macaroni and cheese, as she always does. And you know, as much as I love the craft company, you cannot open a box of blue mac and cheese at a black Thanksgiving. And so mother worked her work, and then she decided that she was going to top off this beautiful baked macaroni and cheese. And so she puts her generic cheese on top, and we watched it for five minutes. We watched it for seven minutes. We watched it for about nine minutes, and we were like, hey, mama, that cheese not going anywhere. <laughs> By now, I could have put the craft cheese on top and covered it in foil, and it would have melted. So we're particular about our brands, and brands are important because it builds the value of an item, and very much so the brand. Brand you is about presenting you in the most authentic method. It's about presenting yourselves appropriately. It is about individuality, but as holy women, it is also about representing our incredibly great God. Again, we recognize that for many of us, we will be the only canvas that some people will ever see, and we may become the deciding factor in someone's life based on what they see about us. And why is that whole exterior important? because I've already made a decision about your story or whether I'm going to trust you or whether I will even listen to you. And so branding is important because where there is no branding, there is no differentiation. And we know that there has to be something that's different between holy and unholy, something that's different between clean and unclean, and it's our chance to do that. Now, if we look at brands again, people buy the brand and not the product. Again, I'm guilty. Because just yesterday I was in a Target store. No, I went to the Dollar Tree first. That's the truth. I went to a Dollar Tree. Because I wanted some water in this hotel. And when I walked in, I saw water. I saw bottled water. But none of it did it look like I was going to bring back to my room because I didn't recognize the brand. And so I decided to go across the street where I walked in and I saw things like Dasani. And I'll even call the other people's names. I do still kind of cringe when I use these names, but even Aquafina, I would drink before I drank some of the brands that I don't recognize. Because when you recognize a brand, there is something about the brand that you know that you can trust. So, Tata Motors, I don't know if we all know their names, but we know their brand. We know them because they brought Jaguar and they bought Range Rover from a company called Ford. And when they bought Jaguar and Range Rover, they didn't buy factories, they didn't buy car parts, they bought the brand. People buy the brand, not the product. When Kraft bought Cadbury for $19.5 billion, they didn't buy chocolate, they didn't buy factories, they didn't buy recipes, but they bought the brand. Four Seasons out of Canada, when they sold themselves to Bill Gates, they didn't sell locations or restaurants or beachfront views or staff members, they sold the brand. And so again, each of us has to recognize the importance of our own brands. Now branding does a couple of things. Brand you does a couple of things. It increases um, visibility, what people see, what they see of our reflection of Christ. It also improves recognition. We ought to be able to still spot the saints. We ought to know ourselves when we see ourselves. Again, brands inspire and they create trust. And lastly, brands inspire in general, and we should be inspiring women because the Bible says that if Christ is lifted up, then in us he draws other people unto him. And so brands lastly also outlive 
products. And we heard, I believe, Mother Taylor even mentioned that methods change, but the message doesn't change. And that's what that means, that brands outlive products, but br products, but they don't outlive the message. And so our brand is very, very important. So you're representing yourself in the most authentic manner, appropriately and individually. Now, in pop culture, there is a saying that they use. You'll hear young people say, I slay. Yes, go ahead, you laugh. I slay. Tell your neighbor, I slay. What does it mean to slay? All of us are going to slay leaving here today as we think about our own personal brands. The first thing you're going to do is select wisely because everything is not for everybody. I know we're in a women's conference with just about 10 days on social media. A hashtag broke out with a discussion of male rompers because everything is not for everybody. Just the same, everything is not for the women of God. Everything that we see on every mannequin, everything that we see on every win in every window, just because it was cute on the model online, you might want to figure out your shape and your height and just how much give and stretch that material has before you execute the bold card. I sat in on a graduation on Saturday, and as folks walked by, I simply said, that's bold. Wasn't trying to call them out. I just thought, that's bold. I, I, that, that wasn't my selection. That was bold. So the first thing is you want to choose wisely. Secondly, learn and respect your audience. You have to know where you're going and how you're going to present where you are. When we come in, when we come into our settings, and I know that we've gone to some very casual environments, but when we walk into God's house especially, we are still in God's house. And there's just a way that when I came up, we came to God's house. And we didn't look like we were going to picnics when we came to God's house. And so it's important that you learn and respect your audience. And we do it in the world, we do it in the workplace. We know where we're going and we participate in organizations and we work on jobs. And when they say put on uniforms, if you want to get paid that day, you put the uniform on. If you're involved in certain civic and social organizations, when they say show up in white, you show up in white. But on Women's Day, we say, well, why do we have to wear white? Just wear the white. Learn and respect your audience. I slay. Next, you're going to accentuate what's positive about you. And also, be age appropriate. There is a store called Forever 21, but a lot of us are not 21 anymore. So you will not forever be 21. And so if you are going to pull select pieces, just make sure they work for you and that they're age appropriate. I'm just kind of thinking skater dresses, as cute as they are on my 14 and a half year old niece, oh, she's so cute in them. Auntie Way does not wear skater dresses because that does not accentuate my positive and it is not age appropriate. I slay, the last thing you're going to do is yield your decisions. We're going to yield our decisions, not to what the fashion blogs say, but we're going to yield to what pleases the Lord. And when you truly desire to please the Lord and look and live holy, you really don't need anybody to give you a list of what to put on. You don't need somebody to pull you in the corner. We want to take wisdom when we receive it, but we shouldn't have to put ourselves in a position to be pulled over. Look at it before you leave home. Raise your hands in it before you leave home. You can't praise them in a crop top. And believe me, I enjoy very high heels, but if you can't praise them, leave them at home or take them off. 
but know what's age appropriate. Yield your decisions not to what is in fashion blogs, but to what pleases the Lord. And again, we do this because it's all about our personal brand. And because we represent our manufacturer, our styles are holy. And when your style is holy, it's not about what anyone else necessarily says, but it says something about your relationship, first of all, with yourself. There's just a way that I think about myself. And I go back to being one of the two brown girls in a black dress, walking up and down the hallways of the Dallas County Courthouse. And I know that there's a way that people entreat you when you've treated yourself a certain way before you get there. So I want to manage how people treat me in my choices. I understand that people respond to you and respect you in a different way, so I want to do that. But secondly, it says something about my relationship with God, that I opt for things that are modest. We should opt for things that the Bible tells us to be modest in our selections. And we have the chance to display spiritual beauty. And our beauty comes from within. We have that chance to radiate Christ in everything that we say and that we do. So when we leave here today, you can say, I slay. You're selecting wisely, learning and respecting your environment, accentuating what is positive and age appropriate, and yielding our decisions to the Lord. And there are lots of women here who look and live holy. There are lots of women. When we leave here today, we're going to return to the places that we live, work, and serve. And so Mother Johnny Mae Pinckney is out there somewhere. Mother Pinckney, where are you? If you'll stand where you are, I think she's still in the room, but she's going back to Florida, and she's going to look and live holy. Hi, Mother, stay, stay standing for me. Lady Marilyn Hobson from Arkansas Second. In Arkansas, she's going to look and live holy. She's in the back. My sister Kim Moss from Austin, Texas. It's hot in Texas, but we're going to keep it sanctified this summer while we look and live holy. She's in the back. Lady Elena Nation in Shreveport, Louisiana. We're going to look and live holy. Missionary Carolyn Green Smith, Bolingbrook, Illinois. We're going to look and live holy. Sister Lydia Sands, even in the Bahamas on the beach. She's in the back. When we're international, we're going to be internationally looking and living holy. And Sister Angel in Michigan, and Sister Ada in California, Sister Cassandra Hall in California. Wherever we are, we are going to look and live holy. Give my sisters, the mothers all around a hand. Thank you all for helping me. Thank you all for being a visible display of what it means to look and live holy. The Bible tells us that we should be respectable and modest. We do it as a matter of our conscience. We do it because it's in our hearts. We do it because we want to think intentionally and act appropriately. We do it because there's a level of discretion that we as women must have. My nine-year-old niece knows the rules. Uh, she'll look sometime and she'll say, you gonna wear that shirt? I was thinking about it until you judged me. Well, I think it'll be okay if you just kind of do this right here. Listen, at nine years old, she's all about modesty and discretion. And she knows the rules already that we just don't show, Auntie Way's a single female, we don't show our future husband's goods. <laughs> and so there is dignity and strength in our choices, but most of all, we're bringing glory and honor to God. So as you slay, think about whether what you choose illustrates the fact that we've surrendered our lives to the Lord. Think about whether it speaks to our commitment as holy women and seek to honor God in everything that we all do as we look and live holy. Be blessed.